Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at this Apple eMac that I found being thrown out quite a while ago. These machines were released in the early 2000s as school-friendly budget machines, but boy were they heavy at about 50 pounds, which is about 25 kilograms. This particular one here is very dirty and will require a bit of TLC. So let's see just what we can do with this old Apple desktop. After a bit of cleaning, I got the eMac looking pretty decent. It's surprising how dirty this desktop really became. It was pretty hard to get the dust that had settled near the rear vent, so I blasted it with high pressure air, but this actually had little effect. A full disassembly would be required, and we'll do that later in the video. So now we can see the eMac in all its mostly clean glory. The design of this computer still holds up very well today. Personally, I do still prefer the translucent plastic of the iMac G3s. However, this machine has far more functionality and a decent selection of ports. The specifications can be found behind the optical drive door. Another interesting part of the casing are these large exposed hex screws. On the base of this machine is a small removable door that allows access to the two SD 133 MHz RAM slots, officially supporting a maximum of 1 GB. So let's see if this machine still works. I've set it up with a keyboard and mouse and after many clicks of the power button it did come to life. In real life the screen looks fine, it's just very hard to capture footage of a CRT due to the refresh rate and the scan lines, so this is as good as I could get it. Looking into the display settings it seems to only run at 72Hz while at 1280x960. But if you lower it to 640x480, it apparently runs at a very high 138Hz. However, this resolution is far too low to be usable. So, what are the specs? This is a 1GHz G4 model, released back in 2003. It features 256MB of RAM by default, as well as an 80GB hard drive. What can you actually do with one of these though? Well, given how old it is, there really isn't that much. Sure, you could play old games, do some word processing, and even browse the internet, but I think it would be more fun to just show you what it's like inside. So, let's take this Apple computer apart. To begin the disassembly, I had to place the eMac on its face. To reduce scuffing of the plastic, I positioned it on top of some placemats. Let's once again remove the RAM cover door with a small Phillips head bit. Next, we have to remove all the hexagonal screws around every side of the eMac, along with the two bottom feet held in place by two Phillips head screws. Once all of these screws are removed, we can finally remove the outer white plastic casing. While removing the case, I noticed that the power button was still connected by a small cable. Once that was unplugged, the outer case came right off. Now we can see most of the internal components. If you plan on taking one of these apart, it is worth noting that there is a high risk of electric shock due to the exposed CRT components. We can also see the single large fan at the back of the machine. To gain further access to the logic board, I removed four more Phillips head screws on this metal shroud. It took a bit of prying with a flat screwdriver bit to move the tabs holding the metal in place. So we can finally get a decent look at the logic board. You can even see the 2003 Apple copyright date on the board itself. Next I removed the single large fan held in place by four Phillips head screws. It's worth noting that this fan is shock mounted with rubber grommets on every mounting point. Once removed we get a decent look at what I assume are the GPU and CPU copper cooling fins. We also get a nice view of the rear CRT display tube. It's incredible how complex these appear to be. To get any further in I'll have to remove the bracket that held the fan in place. After removing four more Phillips head screws as well as two zip ties, the bracket could be moved aside. At this point, the display cable can be disconnected from the logic board. To remove the entire logic board assembly, I disconnected any remaining cables and also removed several more Phillips head screws. With a bit of trial and error, I removed all of the screws and wiggled the whole assembly free from the chassis. Now we can see the logic board in all its glory. Here's the 80GB IDE hard disk as well. So, I think I've pulled it apart enough for this video. It was definitely interesting seeing how this computer is put together internally. So, this Apple eMac that was being thrown out has proven to be quite an interesting machine. The design in my opinion is very attractive and I could totally see these becoming somewhat collectible in the near future. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.